William Jewell fans, uh, I want to welcome you to our first Coach's uh, Corner here at William Jewell College with Coach Cruz. We're going to talk a little bit about the conference. We're going to open up with Southwest Baptist. And, Coach, we have a whole new kind of look in the conference. And I kind of want you to take us, obviously, with yeah. our first opponent. But go ahead and go right down the line and talk a little bit about what you look for in this new conference. You know, it's funny how it's changed in just a couple of years. I mean, a couple of years ago, you and I sitting here talking, talking about traveling to Ohio and traveling to Kentucky and oh, traveling yeah. to Indiana Which we did. and traveling all over. Yeah. And uh, with, with some changes in the conference over really the last year and a half or so with with some of those other schools on the eastern side of the conference, Ohio and Kentucky schools, going in a different direction, and us adding Truman State right. and uh, you know Lincoln and SBU now, there's more Missouri schools in this conference than than any other schools, which uh, which is really nice going forward from a travel standpoint. And and you know me, we, we've we kind of like the travel part of it sometimes to be able to get away and, and be with your guys and all that stuff, but. It sure makes it nice, you know, operationally for everything else when you're planning, you know, maybe a two to three hour travel right, trip than you're planning an eight hour travel trip. It's or a, a lot easier on trip. everybody. Absolutely. And I think it's I think it's going to be really good for the conference, too. And, and uh, as we continue to build the conference and and you start making creating those little rivalries within the conference, just to have more schools in a closer proximity, I think you know, adds to the rivalries for us as well. Yeah, you're a lot closer. And financially, this would really be realistic, too, if you're an athletic director. Which yeah, it you've... It, 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 no, really yeah, does absolutely. Help. You've gone down that road, and, and uh, all of those things help in the grand scheme of things as you look at trying to, you know, there's only so many dollars to go around. Right. And if you have a few more dollars available to, to do some other things with instead of spending them on travel, that really helps. We still have three non-conference games I want to talk a little bit about because they'll be fairly early in the yep. schedule. We, you know, we're, uh, we've got uh, South Dakota School of Mines coming here. Mm -hmm. and of course, we're going to go to Colorado School yep. of Mines and uh, then Valparaiso still. And you want yep. to talk about those three non-conference schools? Yeah, right? you know, right now don't know a ton about them. Obviously, haven't played. Um, none of them have played a game yet, yet this year. Uh, Valpo, we obviously played last year and, and had a good result, although they're really good and they got a new coaching staff now. and. They'll be on top of their game. Um, you know, Colorado Mines, you know, we didn't play them last year, but we played them a couple years before that. And, you know, they're always a top 25 team, and, and Coach Stitt will have them ready to go and playing hard and, and at the top of their game. Uh, and then call, or, uh, South Dakota Mines, who we've had a couple uh, games with the last couple years, and we, I think we split with now right. over a two-year series. And, and uh, they'll be here, and they had a great year last year too. So it sure doesn't get any easier in the non-conference, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, you talk about your schedule, and you know, now you're Division Two, which everybody mm -hmm. knows we've been in it for a while. Uh, level of competition, you know, I don't think people really realize. And this is a question you, you yeah. know, I'm around playing golf and right. talking to people in Kansas City and different things mm -hmm. I do. I don't really think, uh, coach, that people really realize how good you have to be to play at the Division Two level. You know, in in how good you have to be and how mature you have to be. Absolutely. That's, that's one of the main changes as you go through the transition from one level of play in the NAIA to the NCAA Division II level is, you know, you walk into the NCAA Division II level playing against fourth-year juniors and right. fifth-year seniors. And, and uh, we're, we're excited finally this year, uh, you know, 90-some percent of our starters will have been in the program for three years. Our first redshirt class will be redshirt juniors this year. And so we're getting closer to that that experience and that maturity level that I think you know you need to have to be to be highly successful uh, at this level of play for sure yeah you know that's it's all about recruiting as yep. you well know but you know it's also about having those people in your program a certain amount of time uh, you know like uh, let's just talk about and we won't get into we haven't played a ball game I know everybody's probably listening to us that will watch and right. know what we're going to do offensively right. what we're going to do defensively and you pay me big bucks to, <laughs> to cover so, up yeah. for you, yeah, there you but, go. but let's just talk generally uh -huh. about the offense and defense let's talk with the offense a little bit you know yeah. well, where you headed you know, it's been a it's been a fun spring. Obviously, as we as we started into some things last spring already, and making a few adjustments here and there, as everybody does in the off season. You you kind of look at what you've done and look at your personnel and look at maybe how you've matured as a team and decide on maybe how you tweak your approach going forward. And we've tweaked a few things, and and uh, we're excited about some of the things we're seeing from that uh, right now. And and uh, so we're excited to obviously get a chance on Thursday night to really see it for the first time in action. Uh, some of those those little things that we've we've uh, adjusted in the off season here, and then you know defensively as well as you 
will play with a really young, especially defensive front. Last year, only graduated one or two seniors right. with Jack Bissonette and, and uh, Jason Carmichael. You know, with having most of those guys back and uh, really trying to play to our strengths right now with, with that group, um, you know, some tweaks we've made there are, are looking really good on the practice field. You know, how they look on Saturdays or uh, on game day on Thursday night, you know, we're all excited to find out right now. Well, you know, let's talk a little bit about the coaching staff. There's some changes. Uh, you've got a friend that's been a great friend of mine, as you yeah. all know, and everybody knows for a long time. Yeah. Coach Sam Brown's going to help you out yeah. a little bit. But you have a new offensive coordinator. I think maybe yeah. you didn't need to talk about your staff. Yeah, you know, Coach Weigel is is uh, stepped back back into the offensive coordinator role, which you know he's he's done in his career. And you know, nice thing about his him is he's seen it from all different sides. Right. He's been a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, and and uh, will make a very good head coach here probably before too long, honestly, with, with some of the things he can do personally and, and as a coach. But, but uh, he's doing a great job with those guys. And, again, you know, we're, we're taking our personnel and, and getting them in the right spots. And, right. and uh, we're really excited about what we got going forward there. Uh, and defensively, Coach Williams, you know, still, still working with the defense as a coordinator, working with the linebackers. And, and I'm, I'm trying not to screw the secondary up right now as the, as the head coach. But... Uh, as you know, you know, being a former defensive guy, you know, I've coached a lot of things in my past on the defensive side of the ball as sure. well, and and uh, you know, played back there and, and had a lot of successful years in my past coaching back there, and excited about what we're doing back there. And Jack Bissonette, who who was a really productive one of my player favorite us, players here too, uh, is is back there doing some right. good things too, and and uh, learning the coaching ropes, but can add a lot of insight from a player standpoint as well, because he's not too far removed from it, uh, and then. Coach Wabel, you know, moved over from the offensive line to the defensive line this this off season. Has done a great job with those guys up front, and I, I think you'll see some of that when you see us play Thursday night on just you know how aggressive we're playing up there with the defensive front and how they're you know running to the ball and getting off the ball and a lot of those things. You know, and offensively, Taylor Gallagher still working with our receivers and and uh, you know doing a lot of stuff in the passing game as well. And then you know there's a lot of other guys that are they're adding into the operation there, but. But uh, one, you know, you mentioned it a second ago, the, uh, a big hire in the offseason, really in the summer, was Sam Brown uh, at the quarterback position. Um, he's and, been on a few roadies. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's a Hall of Fame coach in high school in, the, in Missouri and, and won a bunch of games at a lot of different places and seen the game uh, for a lot of years. Was and, here a head coach for six years at William Joe? Uh, unbelievable, the things that, that uh, you know, having been in the trenches for as long as, as he's been and, and you've been and, you see things, and the game slowed down for you, meaning that you can see things maybe that some other young coaches can at times. And and uh, his presence for us, you know, all week long, but and then on game days in the boxes, you know, as I listen to the headset, you know, through a couple of preseason scrimmages already, just the calming factor and the way he sees the game is is gonna It'll be is great, gonna for, be great for us a, a, as a as a group collectively. Yeah, he he. I think he'll provide a lot of leadership. And you you know what I really like what you're doing, Jared. I didn't get time to tell you the other day when I saw you over your place, but uh, I like you having your kids come back and be grad TAs and, yep. and stuff like that. They know what you expect yep. in the program, and it makes it a lot easier when they already know what's going to happen before it happens. Exactly, you know, and we've 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 had some success with uh, some of those things over the last couple of years. We've been fortunate enough to. To have a bunch of young coaches come through here and then get opportunities at a lot of different places, you know, we, for a while we had three young guys at the University of Missouri, and right. we had two young guys at Arizona State and University of Wyoming, and we know two of our guys from last year, our young coaches from last year, both you know left for Division One coaching jobs in the off season too. And you know, while it's hard to replace you know good young coaches sometimes, you know, we've been very fortunate to find guys within our program to be able to come in and and uh, fill some of those voids and be very successful as they grow through it. And, and uh, so that's been fun. And it's been fun to watch those guys when we go to coaching clinics and coaching conventions all over the country. And, you know, I call them the prodigal sons now, and we all come sure, back together in some of those environments. And that's, that's as rewarding it, as you know, uh, that's it, coaching. It, it's fun. And, uh, you, know, that's, you know, that's not a tribute to me. That's a tribute to their time here at a, at a great institution and, you know, around a lot of other good Right. Uh, older coaches on our staff that have been good mentors to them as well and and uh, so you know having Jack you know Bissonette and, and Billy Quizert and guys like that that have been in the program back 
you know, Preston Ashton coaching our running backs who played here for Coach Besor and, and some of those things. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, and I think you're doing a lot of really good things. Uh, the re one reason why I brought it up, I think a lot of people don't realize some of the really good things you do to help young people move on in their careers. And I really, my hat's off you'll to you. You'll appreciate that. When you get up my age and Sam's age, you'll appreciate <laughs> that. And it goes good. It's my pleasure to be with DJ, the starting quarterback at uh, William Jewell College. And DJ, congratulations, you got the nod. And why don't you talk a little bit about your offense? Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, it's been an exciting summer. Um, it really has. You know, we made some changes this spring um, with Coach Weigel stepping in as the offense coordinator. And um, we couldn't be more excited about the progress we've made this summer um, and this fall camp. Uh, you know, we return a lot of guys on offense this year. Um, obviously, Thomas Cook will be back in the backfield. Um, him and I have a lot of chemistry together. As, we, um, as my first year actually playing after my redshirt year was when Thomas was able to play. Right. And so we had a lot of time together to kind of grow our relationship, which was awesome. Um, and then offensive line, Brandon Kluwer's back, Jake Holloman. Um, you know, we got a lot of leaders up front. Um, you know, it makes, makes my job a lot easier when those guys are comfortable. You feel better about life, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sunday mornings are a lot easier, too. For sure, for sure to get out of bed. Oh, yeah, exactly. Talk a little bit about the tight ends receivers, too. We haven't said much. Uh, Coach just basically gave us vanilla thing in the first session here, but why, uh -huh. don't, you, why don't you give your guys some kudos? Oh, definitely. Um, Nate Eggie, um, obviously, will be coming back this year. Um, he was our leading receiver last year, and he's only gotten better. Um, he's put on a couple pounds just to kind of bulk up a little bit right. as, you know, at the receiver position, you need as much weight as you can. You um, and then um, we have guys, James Harvey, a senior coming back. Who had a good, pretty good year last year. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's very consistent, and that's one of the things that you need in this offense is just right. consistency. Um, along with him, uh, we have Anthony Mullins, who has proved to be one of the biggest playmakers this fall camp. And his... You know, they might not look at him and see his size as mm -hmm. a big contributing factor, but he is He's quick. a player. He's a player, and he knows football. Um, you know, him and I have got a, some very good chemistry going so far, and I think that's great. Um, we have Quinn, Quentin Riser uh, coming back as well as a senior, and Cody Edwards, um, you know, kind of shaping out our top receivers. You've got then, more experience than what we really think about at times coming back at the receiver position. Oh, right? definitely, definitely. Well, I know you got a new coach that's an old head like myself that <laughs> I used to coach against, uh, Sam Brown. Yes, sir. And I, I personally think Sam's one of the classiest guys I've ever been involved with in coaching. Uh, how do you like Sam? Oh, I love Coach Brown. He's, uh, he's proved to be a very, very influential and effective uh, quarterback coach for me. He's, he's simplified the game as much as he can to make my job as easy as I can. Um, you know, he, we have a progression every play, mm -hmm. and he just makes it as simple as possible. And when I come to the sideline, he always asks to break down every play. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things is, as a quarterback, you got to be able to see the whole field. You bet. Um, so that's every time I come to the sideline, we're always breaking down each play and, you know, finishing plays, even when I don't even have the ball, but affecting the defense somehow. Yeah, I tell you what, son, I'll give you one bit of advice. Listen to him, you'll be fine. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Definitely. I'm excited. Real quickly, we only got about a minute and a half. Okay. Talk, talk a little bit about your first opponent in the conference schedule and also the non-conference schedule just real quickly. Yeah, definitely. Um, we start off with SBU at home. Um, you know, we're hoping to have a good crowd out there. Um, Thursday night, 7 p.m. It's going to be a great day. I mean, they had a... They had a decent year last year, and, you know, they don't return as many guys on defense as they can, so we got to be ready for anything. Um, and then week two, we go out to Colorado School of Mines, and as we all know, they're a tough opponent. Very tough. A very good division. Exactly. And so, year. you know, we couldn't be more excited to play the best. If you want to be the best, you got to be, beat the best. That's why I like you, D. <laughs> I agree with you. So, and then other than that, though, we come home and we start playing a lot of conference games, and I think the ability to just play at home in front of our fans and you know, grow our fan base is going to be the best thing. So I'm excited. You know, let me ask you a quick question. You know, we traveled all over, as you well know. <laughs> yes, We've been sir. all over the place. But now the conference really is pretty much settled in Missouri. Yes, sir. And pretty close. Do you like that better as a player? Um, you know, it, to me, it doesn't really, it's not that big a thing. It was really cool to go to South Dakota, mm -hmm. uh, travel to Colorado. And obviously, week two, we go out to Colorado, and we get to see so many. And play in that stadium, it's a beautiful stadium. Um, so I think seeing traveling is fun, but then when you keep the – day games and you know get some more rivalries right. you know it's gonna be a lot more fun especially going up to Kirksville this year for the yeah, first time um, back to Rolla mm -hmm. so schools like that you know it's fun because 
our fan base gets to travel as close to, so it's, it's good to tr play against teams like that. Well, DJ, good luck to you. Thank you very and, uh, much. I hope you have a great season with you and your teammates. Thank Looking you. forward to it. And let, but that'll wrap up this session of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And I also want to again remind everybody, it's 7 o'clock here at William Jewell. First kick off the conference uh, season on a Thursday night against Southwest Baptist. Hope to see all the Cardinal fans here. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for watching Inside the Cardinal Playbook today, first edition. We've got Coach uh, getting ready to kick off the season. I really want to stress, though, to the alumni, to the students, uh, all the teachers, uh, professors, everybody in Liberty, as far as that goes. Hopefully you'll be at the game Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Southwest Baptist. It will be a, a conference game. Uh, we hope everybody will attend. You know, this is one reason why Coach likes to kick it off on Thursday night to get a good crowd there, and hopefully everybody will be there.